Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and this is, uh... Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special Field Goals Football Snapshot. I'm Joshua Kasparic, a.k.a. Darth Cripple on Twitter, and I want to put my two cents in in terms of Russell Wilson's future, his deal and things he's looking for and his agents looking for, as people consider... Uh, probably the biggest franchise decision in a long time. Uh, the last time Seattle had to do a quarterback deal, it had Matt Hasselbeck, and they managed to sign him for just over $7 million a year back in, I believe it was 2004. So Seattle's got to make a deal here with Russell Wilson, but here's the situation. Uh, the agent, uh, forget the baseball aspect of this, an agent wants to make the best deal for his client, the biggest deal if he can, but the best deal for his client because the deals he makes build his reputation and bring him new clients when he can show, hey, I've gotten this deal done. And I want to talk about what makes me really concerned for this situation. Um, unlike uh, many others, like the Marshawn Lynch deal, or anything of that nature, even the Richard Sherman deal, Russell Wilson and his agent want to now set the market at the position of quarterback. And while, while uh, Richard Sherman did that, and... You know, Earl Thomas was technically the highest paid safety in the league. Russell Wilson could potentially break the franchise bank here. Seattle's walking a tightrope. It doesn't want to set the market at a, at a marquee position like that. From the looks of things. And the conversations John Schneider has had is, you know... Uh, saying, look at our track record, you know, we're not trying to jerk you around, we've, we've rewarded players. But the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking of a deal that went south for Seattle uh, back after the Super Bowl season. And, of course, several of you that follow me on Twitter will know that I'm talking about Steve Hutchinson and the poison pill incident. While the mechanics of the poison pill is not what I'm indicating here with the Russell Wilson deal, the fundamentals of the fact that Steve Hutchinson believed he should be paid what Walter Jones got paid was the impasse that led to his eventual departure from Seattle. While the transition tag became useless because of the poison pill incident, the relationship was soured when Hutchinson believed he was more valuable than the organization felt he was. And, interestingly enough, in studying it and understanding the position that the organization was in and the, and the position Steve Hutchinson was in, I support the end result, even though it was tough to swallow at the time and it's still tough. Steve Hutchinson fundamentally believed he should set the market for guards. He wanted $10 million a year. And Seattle said, no, we're not going to set the standard. We're not going to uh, create a new market for guards. We're not paying you $10 million a year. You're not worth it. The highest paid guard in the business at that time was Edwin Matalo of the Baltimore Ravens. And the reason he made the kind of money he did was because he could slide out and play left tackle. As he had for, uh, I believe, about three or four games um, when Jonathan Ogden was out with a foot injury. Steve Hutchinson could not do that. And so paying him $10 million to play one position when he could play no others for you made no sense to the organization. Steve believed that was an impasse. They said, go out and find a deal that's comparable to the one you're asking for, and then we'll match it. 
And uh, so then Steve Hutchinson went out and, and they basically formulated the deal with the Minnesota Vikings because Steve no longer wanted to return to the organization that so clearly undercut or undervalued him as a player. And this is where the tightrope, regardless of track record. Now, you know, a lot of people will say that that Seahawks organization at that time made a lot of bad deals and a lot of sour tastes were left in players' mouths. And that may be true. But any time a player feels like his value is undercut, any time an agent feels like the organization is continuing to try to get the best deal possible for itself, uh, particularly when you have a, a player of Russell Wilson's caliber, you start to get into the possibility that if Seattle waits through this year, that Russell Wilson will not return to the organization. Um, franchise tag or no, there could be a big mess on its hands. And I'm kind of really nervous about it when I look at all this stuff, and I've seen it happen before, and I've seen players sour on organizations before when they felt like their worth wasn't respected. This, this could get considerably tougher. I mean, especially since uh, Seattle has chosen to rework Marshawn Lynch's deal twice. Uh, to pay him a little more money and, you know, reward him for performance. Uh, this also sends a message to Russell Wilson, who fundamentally believes he is the player that leads this organization, or at least the offense. So, I'm just thinking, if they don't get something done and an extension done this year, you can look forward to a big mess in the near future and I'm very concerned about it and I don't think there'll be another poison pill situation simply because Seattle will not make the mistake of using the transition tag since it's basically a worthless thing anyway since the poison pill exists but I want to know what you guys think should Seattle just pony up and make this guy the highest paid quarterback in the NFL should it try to finagle a deal where it, where it gives him a high guaranteed uh, contract? I mean, what what is the possible scenarios? I I don't have much in the way of scenarios that I think uh, where I think they could get a good deal done for everybody. I just think the longer this goes on, the messier it's getting, and and the more it looks bad for for both sides and in the end it it may sour the organization it may sour Russell Wilson who knows what happens but this uh, if it doesn't get solved soon is only going to fester and be very bad so give me your thoughts below in the in the comment section at field goals if you're here on YouTube uh, leave your comments there I'd love to hear your thoughts as we close in on one of the most important franchise decisions in the last 20 years, I would say. All right, guys. Thanks.